All right, in this video, we're going to build on the transform plane idea. And instead of tilting a full 90 degrees like we did in the example working on the right side and the front side of the part, we're going to put a chamfer on the right side and the front top edge of this part using the end of the end mill on one. So I'll come in and I'll use the end of the end mill. And then on the one we do in the front, I'll use the side of the end mill. So we can see the two different ways to control putting a chamfer on or features like that. You'll be able to see what to do when it's not at a full uh, 90 degrees. But the first thing I want to talk about is how this works when we do a transform plane and some visual things that you really need to be aware of in how the transform plane works, where the rotations happen, and then how to control the tool from there. So in this first example, which is what we're going to do when we chamfer the right side of the part, is we're going to use a transform plane to move the origin point. Then we're going to rotate into position, and then we'll use just a mill frame to do this, uh, this chamfer that we see on the part. So in the transform plane, this is a six inch wide part, but we're only going to move five inches five and a half inches. That's going to give me a half inch chamfer on the end of the part. So you can see that when I put the five and a half inches in here, the center bottom of the tool now is being referenced at this five and a half um, inch distance part in X. And then we're going to rotate 45 degrees around the Y. So I moved to here, I'm rotating only 45 degrees positive. But notice where the rotation point happens. It happens right on that corner of the five and a half inch mark from the left side of the part. And that also becomes our new origin point for X, for Y, which would be the front of the part. We never moved anything on the transform plane, so the Y front side of the part is still zero. That's the new X, and when we rotated, the bottom of the tool now is showing you where the z-axis zero would be. So in this case, when I mill this flat, I'm going to mill from a positive z start value down to z zero. Zero will be the surface that I'm creating here. So it's important that you're able to visualize that rotation and how that rotation point is controlling where Z will be and of course where X, Y and so forth will be. You notice here the little blue arrow show the Z plus, the X plus. So we did, we moved over, we rotated and now that became our new point, our new rotation point or uh, origin point. And now the X axis positive is pointing down and to the right. <clears throat> Here's our Z zero plane. And you can see that on the program here, in the red box, we are programming down to Z0. But you'll want to be aware of however much material sticking up that I have represented here in green, because that's how much material you're going to be moving off. If this was aluminum, that would be less important than if this was P20 steel or something. Obviously, taking a half inch chunk in that may or may not work out very well. So your Z start is going to be have to have to be something large enough to handle whatever that corner is there. So if we were to program just what we did here, we're going to go to our last block, which was the transform plane end from our previous video, where we did the work on the top, right, and front. And I'm going to do this transform plane just like what we saw in this example we're doing here. So I'll do a rotary transform plane. I'm going to move 5.5 inches in X. And I'm going to rotate around Y positive 45 degrees. Next block is going to be a frame. I'm going to start a little bit negative in X, so I'm up above the part. I'm going to start a little bit negative in Y, close to me, the operator. So and then I'm going to make it a one inch wide X positive, and I'll do a uh, six and a half inch positive in Y. So I have a frame now that's a little wider than that flat 
of the chamfer and it's a little longer than the part is in, in both directions. I'll start at 0.5 coming down to Z0. I'll use tool 1 and I'll make that a pocket boundary. In this case, this is all we're going to do. So our next block will be our transform plane end. Next block, transform plane end. And if I hit draw, we're going to see the three things we did in the previous video. And then we'll see that chamfer get machined on there. So that's how we would do it. Let me slow that down a little bit when it gets around here to the, to the end mill chamfering. And we'll see that we're using the end of the end mill, which is a very common way to do it. But it would typically take a few more pecs in Z to get that done in some cases, but a very simple way to do it. So now, if we want to work on the front side, where I want to chamfer, but I want to use the end of the end mill. The example here is going to show us doing it on the right side of the part, but it's again, just so you can get an idea of where the rotations happen and how we control that tool. And then we'll do it a little bit differently on the front side, but the concept will be the same. So again, we're going to do a trans or a transform plane with a 5.5 X positive. We're then going to rotate negative 45 degrees in this case. Rotation point is that corner that's going to be created at the top of the chamfer again. Here's our new origin point is that front corner of that top side of the chamfer. And now we're going to control the tool by using the cutter comp. We're going to do a, to do this, we're going to do a mill um, lines and arcs, and we're just going to start at, at one point and we're going to mill down this part using cutter comp left or cutter comp right to stay to the right or left side of the line that we're getting ready to create. So we'll use that milling type to then control which side of the line or which side of the surface we'll be cutting on using the tool. You can see our Z0 plane there is still created by the bottom of the tool wherever the rotation happened. And obviously the Z bottom is going to control the depth or final depth of that particular feature. So let's go ahead and let's do that. In this case, we're going to program along the front side of the part. We're going to move our origin point to this little red dot here, which is going to be the top of the chamfer on the front edge of the part. We're going to be machining in the, we're going to climb mill this. So we're going to start off to the, to the right side of the part and we're going to move to our left. So it's going to be a cutter comp left to do that. So here's our origin point. We're going to move forward just a half an inch in the Y axis to get to that point. We're not moving X, we're not moving Z. We're then going to rotate 45 degrees negative because it's going to be towards the back. Then we're going to use cutter comp left to control where that chamfer is being machined or which side of Y the uh, tool will be cutting on because now you can see when we tilted, this is our Y axis here. We move forward in Y, we tilt, we move forward, we tilted this way. So this is controlling our Y zero, Y positive, Y negative, so forth. So we'll be using the cutter comp left and what our value for Y is to control where that's cut. So let's go ahead and program that. We're going to go to our last transform plane end. We'll go to next block, transform plane. We're not moving X, we're not moving Z, we're just moving from the original origin point forward or positive 0.5 in the Y. That's our new zero point. The top of that chamfer on the left side of the part. We're going to rotate around the X away from me to the back, which would be a negative rotation of 45 degrees. Our next block will be a lines and arcs profile. Now again, I want to start, if you look here on the slide, I want to start over here on the right side 
because I want to climb mill across this part all the way off the part on the other side. So I'm going to do an X of maybe 6.5, a Y of 0. Again, we're going to use cutter comp to bring that center of that tool up so we're cutting on the side of the part. I'll do 0.1 and let's go down one inch. Use tool one, cutter comp left. All right, so I've started over here. Now I just want to cut climb mill, so going to my left in the negative direction beyond zero by a half an inch. So we're going to do the next segment of a line. We're going to go minus 0.5, still at y zero. That's all we need to do is we need to position, come across there, cut, and stop. So now we can go to our next block and it'll be a transform plane end. If we look at that on our graphics, there's our, our three polygons. Here's our chamfer on the right edge. I'll slow that down and now you can see we did that in one cut all the way across the front side and chamfered with the edge of the end mill. So that's two different ways to control something like a chamfer, but no matter what the feature is, the concept is the same. You need to visualize where you've moved your origin point, where the intersection of these three axes is where the rotation happens, and that also controls where the bottom of that tool is so you know where Z0 is going to be. And then of course the center of the tool will be your X and Y origin. And then you'll use cutter comp or um, something like that to be able to control which side of the end mill or which side you're, you're, you're comping to based on the diameter of the end mill. So hopefully that was clear. Um, we're going to just keep building on this same concept for the different types of things we're going to do around the part. And it's all very simple. You just, once you are able to visualize that, that rotation, where it happens and controlling zero, that's the secret. And you'll be able to do anything on a part that you need to do conversationally.